All right, so we're live, and we are going to unbox a Mars Elegoo 3, and also going to unbox the wash and cure kit. So first thing we'll do is a 3D printer, because that's what everybody wants to see. So I just got this from Amazon. It was a touch under $300 at the time whenever I bought this. All right. Got some foam. More foam. We have the user's manual. Everybody has been waiting for the printer. Get this little box out of the way first. The tool kit. We'll jump to the printer. I want to see the printer. You want to see the printer. We all want to see the printer. Here it is, the Mars Elegoo 3. It's very nicely packaged from Elegoo. Take the top off the enclosure. So we've got the build platform. Which the build platform has got a protective film over it. The z-axis is all the way at the bottom. And then we have the resin vat. as well as a protective screen over the new LCD screen. Very nice. So what we'll do now is we'll look at the tools we got with the kit. So we got some Allen keys, we got the power cord, a little scraper to get the excess resin off of the printer, good old pair of side snips, some funnels, Couple of masks, a scraper to get the parts off with, some gloves, a Chi2 box, serial number for Chi2 box Pro, which is a nice value. And finally, a USB drive. So now, let's work on getting this printer up and running. So this is the first time I've seen it too. But it should be fairly intuitive. We'll go ahead and at least get the power cord unwrapped.
put her in, scoot over the table just a little bit. All right. Now, move all of our tools over. So we'll double check the manual like you probably should have, like I probably should have initially, just to make sure that we got everything that needs to come with it, which everything, um, I had a Mars Elegoo uh, 1, and it looks like everything's here, that we're not missing anything major. It also looks like there's no um, <coughs> major issue with the printer itself. Um, we'll just double check here. So take out the printer carefully and take off the plastic film. Turn on the 3D printer. Please insert the build platform. Fasten the rotary knob and loosen the screws. Remove the resin tank and put an A4 paper between the build platform and 4K LCD screen and click move axis to zero. When the build platform stops, please use one hand to press it and make sure it is. It's in the central position, then fasten it using the Allen wrench. Five, since tightening the screws of the build plate, it will be tighter when pulling out the A4 paper. At that time, you will need to calibrate the height of the Z-axis slightly. If there's no resistance or only a few resistance when pulling out the A4 paper, click to descend the Z-axis at the distance of 0.1 millimeters. If the paper cannot be pulled out or the resistance is very high, then you should click to rise the Z-axis at the distance of 0.1 millimeters. If there's some resistance, but you can still pull it out with slight efforts, then adjusting the Z-axis. So, for me, whenever I'm using resin 3D printers and I'm adjusting that Z-axis height, um, you can use a piece of paper. They don't give you a piece of paper, which is kind of a thing to um, think about. So, what I would prefer to do is actually just cut a little piece of FEP film for this purpose because ultimately what the A4 paper is doing is it's compensating for the thickness of the FEP film in your vat. So that's why I like doing this with an actual piece of FEP film because then you're the exact thickness that you're going to be on your build plate. So with that said, you also don't want to set this on something dirty. Um, so Here's what we'll do. We'll set this on a piece of foam right here for now. So that way it's a clean surface. And we'll go ahead and get out a little piece of FEP film. You could totally do this with a piece of paper though. So don't feel like you get to this point, you're like, oh man, I can't do it because I don't have the FEP film. This is just something that I'd like to do from my experience with resin 3D printers, um, but you can totally just use a piece of paper. I got this FEP film on Amazon, just like I got the printer on Amazon. Eventually I will have links to all of this stuff on the YouTube channel, along with my website, Rainmaker 3D. So, we will get that, and now that we have our little piece of FEP film, I'm going to get my razor blade, and I'm going to cut it in half. So that way it is now perfect 
put right in between my LCD screen and my build plate. So the last thing I'm going to do is the FEP film has got a protective layer on it. If I can get in between that. You definitely want to make sure you always have extra FEP film, by the way, because it's really easy to ding a hole in it, especially if you're using this metal scraper. Don't get this close to your FEP film. Um, that's a sure, I've definitely poked some holes in mine doing that before. So I just got moved to a new house. So this is my new workshop and going to be coming at you with a series of videos on how to, uh, well, this is going to come off eventually, I promise. A whole series on resin 3D printing. There we go. All right, got that side off and that side off. So there's a nice sheet. I don't know if you can even see it, probably not. There's a nice sheet of FEP film. So we'll take off this protective covering off the LCD. I'll go ahead and put this over the LCD. We also have one on the build plate itself or on the um, FEP film on the resin vat. And then we have a, we'll wait to take this off until we actually get our Z axis up. So we'll go ahead and turn the printer on now. All right, let's see. Is there life inside of this guy? Yes. It lives! So, we'll go to, you have tools, system, and print. We'll go to tools, and we'll go into manual mode. So, one huge difference is the resin printer itself, the machine, is much simpler than a three-axis 3D printer that you're used to with your filament 3D printing. So there's only a Z-axis and then there's an LCD screen. So we're going to move the Z-axis up. We'll click the 10 millimeters. And that should be high enough to get us in the game. So we've got a very nice sanded build platform here. And it just slides on. And then there's this kind of ball joint configuration that allows it to level. So it comes, at least this one came very tight. So we need to loosen that up. So we'll get the Allen key out. And that's pretty tight. And so I don't know if you heard it, but it actually kind of pops. So now you want to be able to move it. Just move it. Like the movie. I want to move it, move it. So we'll go back now. And we'll 
Ooh, one other thing that would be good to check that I don't even know if they said to check is to make sure that the LCD screen itself works. So we'll work on that in a second. That is not in the little manual. But first we need to figure out how to home this. So going under manual and this little double button is the home button right there so it's homing now so you just kind of look over it vertically and see that it's pretty even And we'll go ahead and tighten up. With our Allen wrench, go ahead and tighten up our screws. And now what we'll do is we'll go to 0.1 millimeters. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get that little piece of film out. So there we go, it just came out, and there's a little bit of friction, so that's good, we're at the proper Z height, so now we're going to go back, we're going to hit Z equals zero, we're going to confirm that, go to manual, 10 millimeters, and be sure you do not go down, go up. So now we'll keep going up. And we want to go up high enough to get out of the way so we can put our resin vat back into the printer. Now we put our vat back in, tighten it down, so we've set z equals zero so we're past step six now, so now we've also gone ahead and we've jogged up 10 millimeters, it says to do it 10 times, so 100 millimeters, so we've done that, we've put the resin vat back in. Test the lights by pressing tool exposure next. So that is in the manual. I was wrong. So let's go back. Exposure. And next. Yeah, that's really nice. So we're looking through. And it doesn't seem to be like there's any dead pixels on the LCD. Looks really nice in the machine. And so it shows Elegoo Technology, www.elegoo.com. So now we have our print test. It's a really cool design for the uh, UV protecting cover. 
So ideally you print with the UV protecting cover to protect the resin that's in the vat from UV light from different light sources that are in your room, in your house. So, now it came with some little gloves. I'm six foot four, 250 pounds, so I've got some big gloves. So we will um, go ahead and glove up. So it depends on what kind of resin you're printing with in regards to the fumes and, and if you need a mask. If you don't know, um, you could definitely go ahead and wear the mask out of an abundance of caution. But this, this different resins can definitely um, irritate your skin. You really don't want it in your eyes. That would be awful. So you got to be careful when you're dealing with resin as opposed to whenever you were dealing with uh, filaments. It's a lot different game. So now the one thing I will say that is definitely standing out is you do not get any resin that comes with the 3D printer. Now luckily I have a ton of resin from other 3D printers and went ahead and ordered some. So I have some uh, a bunch of any cubic and then I've also got a good amount of resins in my toolkit back here. So I've got some different Mars Elegoo resins. I've got some black. Um, this is what the Mars Elegoo looks like. I've got some Ceratec resin. Um, I've got this stuff's pretty cool. Liquid, a uh, company over in the Netherlands. So um, I've also got some uh, Uri One. Uri One. That's an interesting name. That sounds like some something somebody in the South around here would say. Uri One needs to get to the ball. So, um, just to make sure that this printer is going to work, though, that's all used resin. Let's go with the brand new resin. I've got some black, some white, some translucent green. Um, let's just go with good old gray. This stuff really, really screws up. So the other big thing you want to do is the resin can settle. And so you need to shake your resin for a good 30 seconds. before you pour it into the resin vat. So while we're shaking it, we'll keep reading. So put the resin up to the max line. sure that we move our z-axis up. Actually, we'll get this as far out of the way as we can. It's got a max fill line in the back of the bat. I've had a lot of luck with any cubic photon resin. I've also had a ton of luck with the Elegoo. Um, so far, I really have not had a bad resin to speak of. They're all pretty good. So the different resins can have a very strong smell to them, so be warned, this gray isn't that bad, but just be mindful that 
uh, whenever you're resin 3D printing, you know, if you want to do some more research into the resins to see um, in regards to the fumes, I had to look up some different data sheets for different resins. And as long as you, you don't ingest it, you don't get it on your skin, you don't get it on your eyes, you should be fine. Um, I'm sure there are, well, I know that there are some eco-friendly resins that uh, smell a little bit less. So there are definitely some resins out there that aren't as potent, aren't as strong. This is also something really handy to have, either paper towels or you can get a bag of painter's rags from Home Depot or Lowe's or... Uh, just something to kind of wipe the resin off of your gloves, wipe it off of the resin bottle itself just to wipe them down. And then you could either throw these away or reuse them. We'll just set it here for now. So we've got our USB. There's also air bubbles from all the shaking, and so you want to let the, give the air bubbles a chance to rise to the top. So we'll go back to print. And so we've got the Rook model. So it's got two Rooks on it. And so we just hit print. Place the UV cover over the top. And we'll make sure that the first layer is good. That's always a huge thing is just making sure that the printer doesn't glitch out. I know occasionally I had issues on the Mars one that that first layer would just glitch out and I would have to restart the printer, restart the print. So we'll see if that's an issue on the Elgo three or on the Mars three. Uh, after I get some reps under my belt with this printer, I'll do a full scale review. I'll also go through and show um, more in depth with, with better angles, how you can level the build plate, this is really, really straightforward, uh, very simple to do. Um, all right. So we'll see the first layer should flash across. Yeah, two circles, that's perfect. So when we're printing the rooks, it's just a circle. And to talk through some of the fundamentals of resin 3D printing, it just goes layer by layer. An entire layer gets cured at a time. You can see the UV lights on down here. And so we'll just let this cook and it uh, has a projected time of two hours and 17 minutes. So I'm not gonna sit here on the live stream for two hours and 17 minutes. But what we'll do is we'll make a future video showing how this goes. And the first layers are likely 40 seconds each. And so they take a lot longer, but the big thing with MSLA is the layers go super, super fast. So you can have layers in one second, one and a half, two seconds. So the technology is really coming along speed wise for this type of printing. Um, other things to be on the look for would be the Anycubic um, Photon Mono X. I'm gonna go ahead and do a big opening on it. But while this is printing, what we'll go ahead and do is we will take a look at the wash and cure station. So if you only bought the printer, um, you're gonna have a little bit of issues when it comes to the post-processing. So you need to be prepared that if you buy this printer, you are not ready to go into full resin 3D printing. You need to also have a way to wash the prints. So that could be as simple as a bottle of uh, preferably 95% plus alcohol um, to clean the print with. 
to watch the print because when you get the prints out of the printer, um, they'll be dripping with resin and so you'll have to get the excess resin off. I would recommend a toothbrush, um, just a, a really uh, fine toothbrush and some alcohol. I also prefer to bathe the resin myself. I made my own resin um, cleaning vat uh, with a magnetic stirrer. But I did go ahead and buy the wash and cure machine, so we'll go ahead and get into that next while this is continuing to print. Um, and then you also need a way to cure these. So these are not fully cured when they come out of the printer, they're only partially cured. And so you've got to put them under UV light and expose them. It's different for each type of resin. There's really good uh, resources out there that the community has put together. But essentially, you know, um, you got to have a way to cure it. So a super, super basic, the most basic I could think of is some alcohol in a little squirt bottle, spray the print off in a bowl, take the print outside on a sunny day, and just be sure to rotate because the sun's light has got UV rays in it. That is the absolute cheapest, most budget simple way. If you forgot and you're just really excited and you want to go ahead and print, that's the way to do it. Now, the better way. You need to have a high quality place to wash your print in. Um, I've seen people use all sorts of different types of containers, but just some container with enough alcohol to preferably fully submerge the print. Get your brush in there, brush it around, um, and then take the print out. Um, you don't want to leave it in alcohol too long. You don't want to let it soak in there for um, you know, like an hour. I mean, this is just something real quick. You're just, all you're trying to do is get the excess resin off of the print. Anything that you don't want to cure on the print, get your supports off all that stuff, because once you put it in the UV light, the supports now bond if you didn't take those off. Um, so it, it becomes a little bit harder to get them off. I like to take my supports off while I'm washing the print, before I'm washing the print, um, and then just go ahead and then throw the supports away. Um, so the next step is you need a way to cure with UV light. So I've got some different things that I use. I actually made a giant ice chest um, with a UV light system in it. And then I've got a little system. I'll go ahead and pull that out here so I can show you. But all you really have to do is have a way to expose your entire print to UV light. So I've got some UV lights, some UV LED lights, aluminum foil because it it does absorb in UV but it does partially reflect so it's it's the cheapest thing you can get to reflect the light all around and then I've got a little spin base in the bottom of this cooler. And it was just a cooler I had lying around that could be a sealed system. Um, so that's a way to make a UV curing station on a budget. But now, let's look at the big league stuff. So this is the Wash and Cure Mercury X Bundle. Pretty excited about this too. So, if you're watching this before you bought a printer, just know you need to buy the printer itself, some resin, some 95% alcohol to wash your prints in, some sort of container to put said alcohol in, some way to cure your print preferably other than the sun. So, this bundle covers that and is a great way to do it. It comes with a manual. Alright, so this is the bottom of the light station.
look at that. That's a nice container. So we'll take the foam out, put it in the box. And just want to emphasize in this case, I did buy all this myself. I just wanted it and wanted to show uh, everybody what I thought sure does look like one of the best sub $300 printers that I've ever seen. So I'm excited to get into it. This is the base for the curing for the wash station, and this is the base for the um, curing station. We have some more lights, some more lights. We have a power cable. We have some little screws and an Allen wrench. And then we have the actual dip. Just dip it. Lights out. I'll tell you what we'll do first is let's go ahead and take a look at the washing station and before we get too far ahead of that we should probably once again look at the manual so So it's got a stirrer at the bottom of the wash station. It's 12 watt, um, between 100 and 240 volt input, 50 or 60 hertz. So whether you're in Europe or you're in the United States, uh, we're 120, 60 hertz in the United States. Um, so it says it's recommended to clean a model that's less than 30 millimeters in diameter for a minute and it gives a maximum cleaning volume which is 180 millimeters by 121 millimeters by 153 millimeters for cleaning with the platform and without a platform it gives 201 by 124 by 255 and so um, these both run off the same power supply so keep that in mind as well so the Elgu Mercury X Cure is 36 watts, and we'll get to putting that together here in a second.
So this looks good and all. Fairly straightforward. It did come with an Allen key and some screws to put the other stand-up lights on the um, curing station. But we'll go ahead and first address the washing station so we can get it out of the way. So it kind of snaps into place. Now the one thing I realize that I don't have is a lot of alcohol, um, at least the alcohol that you can pour in here. Um, so I'll need to go and get some of that while this is printing. Um, I go ahead and run prints all the time overnight and have not ever had any issues. The worst thing that's ever happened is a failed print. So um, that's just what I've done in the past. So we'll see. We're 6% through right now. It's been 15 minutes um, and we're on layer 71. So it should start to go pretty quickly now. So there's the wash and cure station. For the wash station, here's the cure station. All right, so there is different sides. So you've, you've got this cord and we'll go ahead and uh, see if we can just plug it in, if we don't have to take the zip ties off or not. Or the little ties, they're not zip ties. So it just kind of snaps in there. We will have to take this off because it's, it goes in the screw hole. All right. So we'll go ahead and screw this one into place. You know what else? I do really like about this that my homebrew um, cure station does not have. It's actually got UVs, LEDs underneath the print. And it's got this little bit of a, um, well, those aren't perforations, but these little bumps. Um, so that way it elevates the print, the uh, bottom of it. That's a nice feature. I, I like that a lot. So that way you shouldn't have to rotate your parts.
So it's got five screws per light. So far our print's going really well. So that's good. Found it. Try not to drop that again. So this side has got two plugs, so we'll go ahead and do the first one in the back. We'll do the UV LED light source in the front. Now I hope that uh, if you're looking for printers, I would highly recommend um, either the Mars 3, which we'll see, um, should be a good printer. Love the Mars 1. It is a great printer. I used it for work every day. Um, extremely reliable. Only had a few glitches, but for under $300, um, it's pretty incredible the tooling that I was able to produce with that resin 3D printer. Um, and in the same price range and category is the Ender 3, which I have a ton of videos um, and, and we'll be having more. Eventually, we'll have some courses on how to use these 3D printers um, more in depth. So I'll have some of that available for free on YouTube and then also we'll have um, quite a bit of content on my website as well as you to me and some other places that we'll get figured out when we have the courses. So bam, bada boom, bada bang, we have got the curing station and we've also got the washing station. So we'll make sure that they both power up. extension cord. We get an extension cord. This will not be the final home of these devices.
here we go. So I said one power cable runs both of these. So long press. There we go. So you have to press it for three seconds. So, since I don't have any alcohol, I'm going to go run and fill this up with water, real quick, just so we can see if it'll spin up or not. mistake. Look at that. That's pretty nifty. So it's got a timer on it so you can set your time. So, yeah, we'll go run and get some alcohol and have fun. if the cover's over it or not. But there we go. So now we have a print in. So we've got the wash station, we've got the cure station. And everything looks pretty good to me. Came with a couple extra screws, um, you know, and it all looks pretty good. I think it'll be a good printer. Um, we're already, we'll see how far along we are on this print. If 
15% done. So, with that said, uh, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to cover. So we have the Mars Elegoo 3, we have the Mercury X wash and cure system. And so, I'll let you know in a future video how the prints went. And I want to thank you for joining us. And if you come back and watch this later, uh, be sure to check out and subscribe to Rainmaker 3D. Really do appreciate your support and really looking forward to getting back in the content game and help to make you a lot of great content for resin 3D printers and eventually for all sorts of different stuff. So thank you.